Hi kids, Mrs. Elaine here. Welcome to our grade three, four Sunday school class today. I'm glad you're joining me. And we're continuing in our curriculum this year, which is called to be like Jesus. And a very interesting lesson for you today. All of them are interesting, of course, but today's lesson is gonna give you a tool, a really specific tool to help you to become more like Jesus. Well, we're gonna begin our lesson today with prayer. So would you bow your heads with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word which teaches us. Thank you for the help that you give us. And I pray that today you would help us to learn, help me as I teach, help these boys and girls to understand my words and what they will learn from your word in order that they may become more like Jesus and myself as well. I pray that you would be glorified in what is said and done today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, kids, we're going to start with an illustration, okay? And glass of milk. This is the milk illustration. I want to show you a glass of milk here. I'm going to hold it up in front of the camera so you can see it. Now, no, it's not chocolate milk. Uh, I just want to tip it so you can see the inside. What does it look like? Not very good. You see things crawling around in there? Now, what do you think? Would you want to drink this milk? Well, you know what? I actually have a way to make it better. Hold on. What if I did this? Yeah. Now look at that. The milk is clean. What do you think? Would you drink it now? Uh, some of you are thinking, no, I know what's in there. Well, you know what? The inside of the glass is still dirty. Uh, the milk is still dirty. The outside looks nice and clean, but not the inside. Now, this illustration, kids, can actually teach us something about sanctification. That's a word that you learned a few weeks ago in one of your lessons, a big word. But that our sinful nature, the, the nature that we have inside of us, which is sinful and dirty, just like that glass of milk, it is, it is like this, uh, this glass of dirty milk because it is dirty inside. The outside might look okay, especially with the piece of paper on. It looks nice and white and clean, but the inside is still dirty. And that is a problem for us if we are Christians. We are not fit for eternal life in heaven uh, with a holy and righteous God if the insides are not clean. Now, we're gonna talk about this a little more, but in this next slide, we're gonna bring to your attention, two big words that you learned. One of them, of course, is sanctification. The other is justification. And justification, the, the um, definition of that is just on your right-hand side. And it says this, everyone who is trusting in Jesus receives forgiveness of sin and is given Jesus's own righteousness. God pronounces you not guilty because of what Jesus has done. And so in some ways, kids, that is like the white paper covering the milk. God has said, even though your heart is still sinful, because you've trusted in me, trusted in my son's death on the cross, then you are righteous in my sight. So that's justification. Now, it doesn't mean there's no longer any sin on, in us when we become a Christian. The inside, um, the condition of our inside still needs to be changed. All right, just like what I said, would you drink this, this milk if the white paper was around it? It made it look better, but you still wouldn't drink it because the inside is still dirty and contaminated. Now in sanctification, the definition is on, definition is on the lower left-hand side of your screen. It says this, sanctification is God's work in us in which we strive to become more and more like Jesus so that our inside nature becomes increasingly righteous and holy and you know what once we are once christ begins to sanctify us we start to look more like this here's a nice clean glass of milk i'll show you the the uh, the difference i don't know if you can see it but there's the difference clean glass of milk there are insides become cleaner and they become more sanctified righteous and holy that is what we are aiming for in our christian life with god now Here's an, here's an example. 
suppose um, suppose you loved building model aircraft and you built this really, really nice model airplane, finished it all, very proud of yourself and you set it on the dining room table and you went out to do something. And when you came back in to your horror and shock, you see the plane in a box all broken to pieces. And, and you just start to feel this anger rising up in you because it took you so long, hours and hours, to make that. Well, what if your little sister all of a sudden runs in the room, she makes this nasty face at you, sticks out her tongue, and she said, nah, nah, I broke your airplane. Ooh, what do you think you might be feeling right now? And what kinds of thoughts would come to your mind? And what do you think you'd like to do to your little sister? Well, I can just imagine. Now, here's a question. Do you think that God cares how you feel and act at this time? He does, doesn't he? For sure. How you respond to your sister. Do you think Jesus has given us any teachings or commands in his word, the Bible, that tells us how we should respond and act when situations like this happen? Yes, he has, and we're going to go to God's Word right now. If you have your Bible handy, you can look these up in your Bible. Otherwise, I do have them on the screen for you to read. Here's three verses from Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, and let's read what Jesus says. He says, Bless those who curse you, who curse you pray for those who abuse you, and as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Okay, here's the question. For that older brother, or maybe for you in different circumstances, do you think this is the first reaction that you would have if somebody did something really nasty or mean to you? Now be honest, I know it wouldn't be the first reaction I would have. I would be angry, I would want to get back at them, I would maybe, maybe if it was your little sister, you'd want to hit her. So those are the reactions that first come to your mind, the first things you think about. Well, this is how Jesus said we should act, first and foremost, in any given situation that might make us upset or angry. And you know, it's interesting that the Apostle Paul in the New Testament had the same feeling, but he said it was a real struggle for him. This is what he says in Romans chapter 7, for my inner being, I, in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law at sin at work within me. So what he was simply saying, kids, is that there was a spiritual war going on inside of him. He wanted to do what was right because he delighted in God's law. But yet his mind and his, his lips and his actions showed otherwise that he was following the way of, of sin. So parts of him were saying, no, don't do that. Other parts were saying, yes, do that. And he was struggling. It was, he, he likened it to a war within him. So here's the question. Do you think we as Christians should just give up? Should we say, no, this is, this is too hard. I can't do this anymore, Jesus. I can't be like you. I give up. No, I, I don't think we need to give up. And you know what? Um, God has actually given us help. We're going to talk about that next. Now, here's another illustration. Suppose I gave you some instructions to build a birdhouse, all right? Nice little chickadee birdhouse. And I gave you a toolbox and I gave you some wood. And I say, go at it, go build the chickadee house. Could you do it? Do you see anything that's missing? Well, if you said tools, you're absolutely right. I mean, the toolbox is totally empty. There's nothing in it. You would need a hammer, you would need nails, you would need glue. Um, you have the wood, you have the instructions, but you need the tools. Do you know, God knows that we struggle inside with our sin. And Jesus is a very, very compassionate master and Lord. And so he hasn't left us without any help. He's provided us with the necessary tools that we need to live a righteous and holy life in Christ. And in 2 Peter 1, verse 3a, God's word shows us this. It says this, his divine power, that means God's divine power, has granted to us, given us, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now that word pertain 
means belonging to. And the word godliness means righteous and holy. So the question is, boys and girls, has God left us without any tools or help to live a righteous and holy life? No, he hasn't. And a matter of fact, look at the verse, what it says. He's given us all things that we need. So let's try to find out now, what has he given us? Well, here's another verse from 2 Thessalonians that's really, really important in trying to figure out what tools has God given us to live a righteous and holy life. This verse says, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. Now, here's a question. As you look at this verse, does this verse mention the ongoing process by which we as Christians grow to become more like Jesus? in righteousness and holiness it's one word and you've already learned this word in a previous lesson now if you said sanctifying you're right that is the word that is the ongoing process by which god changes us into becoming more like jesus christ but how does he do it that's the question boys and girls how does he do it if you look at that verse can you see two ways that god does that how does he sanctify us it says through the work of the spirit and through belief in the truth in his word that is how god sanctifies us now another verse is really really important a few verses actually what i want you boys and girls to do now with this few verses is i want you to pause and uh the recording right now the video i want you to read through these verses um either on your own or hopefully your mom and dad are in the room with you. So read through them with your mom and dad. And then I want you to answer these questions, all right, up in, uh, on the right-hand side of the screen. Answer these four questions and we're gonna come back and see if you get the answers right. Okay, here are the answers. Well, how did you do? Did you get those answers right? They weren't too hard. So Jesus is speaking here and he's speaking to his disciples and he's wanting them to keep his commandments. And he is promising them something. He said, I promise to give you a helper, the spirit of truth. Now, he is talking, kids, about the Holy Spirit. And in the Bible, we learn more about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is actually the third person of the Trinity. Now, this may be a little hard to understand and, and actually, I don't know if we can understand it fully, but that's okay. It is in God's word and it is true. The Bible teaches that God is one God, but that he exists in three persons. He exists in the person of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That is the triune God. So if we go back to this verse, these few verses, where does Jesus say that the Holy Spirit lives or dwells? Look at these verses again, specifically the last sentence. It says, the Holy Spirit dwells with you and will be in you. Isn't that amazing? So boys and girls, the Holy Spirit is the most important tool, apart from God's word, that God has given us to help us grow in righteousness and holiness. He is the key for our sanctification. And if you are a Christian, he lives in you. So if you have trusted in the finished work of Jesus on the cross, you believe that Jesus died for you, paying the penalty for your sin, that he rose again from the dead, and that now he lives in heaven, you have the Holy Spirit within you. And look what the Holy Spirit does for you. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit gives us power. The Holy Spirit gives us strength. Now, the key thing is, in our sanctification, as we are growing to become more like Jesus, we need to listen every single day for the Spirit's voice. How do we do that? Well, let's go back to our example of this mean little sister and, and the older brother who was so upset with her. The Apostle Paul says in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, and this is a command, he says this, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. By the flesh, he means our sinful nature inside of us, that nature that is always wanting to do something wrong. So 
let me ask you a question. If this brother and sister were walking by the Spirit, how would that look like? What would that look, have looked like? Well, if this little sister had been walking by the Spirit, she would have known that going in and smashing her brother's uh, airplane that he just built was very wrong and very, very a very nasty thing to do. And she probably wouldn't have done that because she would have shown love to him instead. And she would have maybe said something like, hey, that's such a cool airplane. Can you, can you help me build something? And now what if she did do that? And then the brother's reaction, how do you think he could have reacted? Well, he could have showed kindness and patience with her instead, even though it was wrong and she should not get away with doing something like that. He could have shown kindness and patience. And actually the Bible talks about those very responses in another few verses in the book of Galatians. And here it is, Galatians chapter five, verses 22 to 23. You might recognize these few verses uh, as, as being called the fruit of the spirit. And it says this, but the fruit of the spirit, that's, that's the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So if those two kids, that brother and little sister had acted in the right way, that little sister would have shown self-control and not smashed her brother's airplane. She would have shown kindness. She would have shown love to him and maybe praised him for doing such a good job. And if that brother had experienced something nasty that the little sister had done, such as breaking the airplane, he could have instead had self-control and not gotten very angry. And he could have shown her love and patience. So you see, kids, this is how uh, our sanctification works. It works through the Holy Spirit, bringing change to us. Uh, as we live in the word of God and listen to the voice of God and through his word, and our sanctification, though, is a lifelong process. Now, that might seem uh, a little sad, thinking, oh, wow, I'll never be perfect in this lifetime. And no, we won't, but that's okay. We need, though, to let the Holy Spirit work in and through us to change us. And yes, it is a lifelong process if you are a Christian. He is still changing me, and I'm way older than you kids. And that's okay, but he is still working on me. He's not finished with me yet, and he's not finished with you yet. And our goal this year, of course, is to be sanctified and to be more like Jesus Christ. So let's bow our heads in prayer as we close off our lesson today and ask the Lord to help us to be like Jesus. Father in heaven, uh, thank you so much for the Holy Spirit that you have given us to be our helper, to guide us, to lead us into all truth through your word. Please help each of us, these boys and girls, myself included, to listen to your voice each week. And we pray that you would help us to become more like Jesus. Please sanctify us. Set us apart for Christ to be more like the master and savior. Um, and set us apart for your kingdom work and help us to please you in all we do and say, thank you though that when we fail and when we sin, there is forgiveness and you willingly uh, and freely forgive us for our sins. So we praise you for this. And I ask that you would help these boys and girls as they go through this week to remember the fruit of the Spirit in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's it for this Sunday, kids. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Go over it again if you want, because it was an awful lot of information there. And I will be praying for you, uh, just as I pray for myself, that we can all grow to be more like Jesus, our master. So we will see you next time. Take care, kids.